Hey guys, to Legit City here. Today in the game of Oxen Included, we're going to be going over the October 2023 quality of life update. As the name suggests, this update will slightly modify or add changes that we focus on improving the overall experience of the user playing. No content will be added in this patch, but it does include some important changes that I'll go over. The first set of changes will be for critters. Puffs, shine bugs, gassy moves, and slixers can now be wrangled instead of relying on traps. Not only that, you're now able to use the recently added move to command on all critters to relocate them instead of having to build a critter drop off. This action does require you to have the duplicate with the ability to wrangle critters for it to be possible. Morbs and betas are the only exceptions to this rule, as they cannot be relocated via the move to tool. Puffs and Slixers now consume more gases as they get hungrier. This does not change the overall output of either critter, but rather helps to make up for missed days. The change is similar to how a starving dupe will eat extra calories to make up for the missed meals. Next is the new building of the Critter Cargo Bay Rocket Module. As the name suggests, it's a rocket module specifically for transporting critters. It is a 1 unit height, a burden of 1, costs 200 kilograms of any refined metal, and only holds one critter at a time. Critters inside the module will still age, but do not get hungry, nor will it lay eggs or create resources. But because we could build a critter drop-off inside the spacefarer, the only advantage of this would be to transport the critter the beta. Now a similar building already exists in the base game, the biological cargo bay, which functions similarly. Maybe they'll decide to bring back critters on points of interest that could be extracted via this rocket module. Along with that, we have another new building, the Light Sensor. This detects ambient lux value on the tile the sensor is built on and sends out an automation signal. While having the option is nice, there isn't enough tools to really utilize the light. Maybe if we had something like a semi-transparent door, maybe made out of plastium, we would have more ways to utilize it. Next, we have the reclassification of industrial buildings. In the room overlay, you may notice that some rooms do not allow for the presence of industrial buildings or buildings in the industrial category. This update changes which buildings belong and which do not. The conveyor loader, crafting station, clothing refashionator, the textile loom, are no longer considered industrial buildings. While the rock crusher, metal refinery, steam turbine, robo miner, power control station, blast shot maker, meteor blaster, and the high pressure gas vent are added to the list of industrial machinery. And only the DLC, the interplanetary launcher, diamond press, and sludge press are added into industrial machinery as well. And just so you know, you don't have to memorize this list, as you could view the industrial building status in the room requirement when mousing over the building option. The next feature is the added search filter to the storage bins and supply closet. This function is the same search bar in the building menu, but added to every type of storage bin. This makes looking up something like sulfur a little bit easier for me and it's something I tend to forget the category of. And for the supply closet, this is a great filter option to help you find out which blueprints you have multiples of. Although everyone hates getting multiples of the same blueprint, there's now an option for that as well. The last, but in my opinion the biggest addition, the ability to recycle blueprints have been added to the game. If you're familiar with the spool system and don't starve together, this system is effectively the same. Every week you're able to receive 3 blueprints from just playing the game, but those blueprints are random. Now if you get something you already have, you could choose to recycle the blueprint to receive something called filament. This filament is the currency to purchase other blueprints. So if there's something you've always wanted from the blueprint shop, you can now get it at a cost. Now for the minor updates and changes. Liquefiables, abyssalite, diamond, sulfur, corium, and solid nuclear waste are now visible in the materials overlay. Automation ports have been added into the plant pulverizer and the manual rad bolt generator. New sweepy animation added in for the critter fountain. 60 new blueprints added. Updated database elements and status elements. Potential fix for the Atmos to checkpoint bypass glitch, added solid ethanol to temp shift plate resource list, fixed the pitcher pump bug that deletes water when the task is interrupted, various element artwork improvements, fixed visual and animation bugs regarding critters, and other various bugs and crash fixes. And with that, that has been the October 2023 quality of life update. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank y'all for watching.